Baldy, do we have you? Bo, Zach, yeah, you got me. Um, I've had my share of uh, memorable times in uh, in Atlanta, for sure. Spent a lot of time down there over the years. Yeah, I mean, Baldy, I, I feel like there's no there's no place in the world, there's no uh, category that that Baldy doesn't have some kind of story. The man, the man has. I mean, I, could, I, I, I look. There's some stories in Bucket I probably can't tell <laughs> even on this air right now, but. Um, there's been some golden moments. I mean, the Super Bowl was down there twice. So I've been there for both Super Bowls. So one was an ice storm that everybody wants to forget. One was back in, I don't know, 1994. Like, there were some good parties, as as I recall back then. I saw a, a picture Baldy posted recently working out with Mike Piazza on mm. the beach. And I'm like, Baldy's like Forrest Gump. He's, 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 he's been everywhere and has met everyone. I think yeah. that's right. That was, uh, that was a long time ago, Zach. That's like almost... It's hard to believe, but it's like almost 30 years ago, Mike. We were working out in Hermosa Beach at my buddy's gym back then. Love that. Uh, all right, Baldy, we are, uh, we're a week away from the draft. Yeah. So we are, uh, we're, we're trying to get it all in while we can here. Uh, let's, let's, you and I talked defensive tackles last week, so we'll, we'll put that to the side for now. Uh, we know that the Eagles certainly have a need at linebacker. We also know that Howie Roseman is not going to draft one in the first round. Not that there is necessarily a first-round caliber linebacker in this draft, but if we're talking day two, who are the guys that have sort of caught your eye at, at that position? Well, I mean, the, I, I think the bet, there's two that had really caught my eye. Peyton Wilson in North Carolina State. Uh, I mean, if you just watch him play, don't forget about the medical because he's got an ACL and, you know, he's hamstring and shoulder. He's had some things. But you just watch that guy play. He's a first-round pick. Like, he's 6'4", he's 240 pounds, he runs in the 4'4s. Like, he's an elite, elite prospect. He can cover. Like, he smacks you when he hits you. Um, but he'll probably be – in fact, I'm doing this thing today. On I have him going uh, – I forget exactly where I had I had him going as high as 37 to the Chargers in the second round because they look like they need linebackers. To Dallas at 56 in the second round, they need linebackers. Like, you know, and you could drop you know, all the way down. So, I have – I had this note right here, but I can't find it right now. Anyways, like he's – oh, here. Wait a second. I had him going to 65 to Carolina, the first pick in the third round. Like I could see any – like in that range from 37 to 65, which is a big range. But I, I, I feel like the sweet spot is second rounder, and the Eagles are picking 50 and 53 yep. in the second round. Like he would, he would make that defense look a whole lot faster. If him and Devin White, you were lining up at inside linebacker, that – that might be the fastest tandem of linebackers in the league. Baldy, I'm, I'm curious about Jeremiah Trotter Jr. It's a, a name that's getting a lot of attention in Philly for obvious reasons. One, your evaluation of the player, but also understanding the, the dynamics of playing in Philadelphia, of kind of maybe the pressure that would come with that name playing in Philadelphia. Do you think that's something that the Eagles would need to consider? I think you have to consider it. I mean, Jeremiah Trotter is an icon in this business. I mean, the way that he played, the intensity he played with. I think I think Jeremiah was a third-round pick coming out of Stephen F. Austin, if I'm not, yep. if I'm not right. mistaken, Zach. Um, you know, and he just brought a whole lot of, you know, I mean, 200 and whatever he was, 50 pounds. I mean, he just brought a whole lot of oomph to the middle of that line, that defense. And that, that's not – his son isn't, isn't built like that. Now, he's a good player. He's been a good player at Clemson the last two, three years. I don't think he's what you're looking for when – you're a three down linebacker right now, and you got to cover backs and tight ends in this league at six feet tall. Like, I'm not knocking him, but, you know, he's probably a third round pick right now, maybe a day three pick. Um, I, but I would consider going, look, you're following your dad's footsteps, maybe he embraced it. I remember meeting him for the first time when he was like 15, and you could see the frame was already there. Like, you know, like the guy, he just looked like an athlete when he was 15. Um, at some event I was at with with uh, Trot, but um, I, I'd be a, I'd be a little worried that because they haven't they, they can't find linebackers here. They, you know, it, it's already a, a troubled position, and if you you're asking them to be the next Trot, like I, that might be a lot to ask. I want to circle back to to the first question, Baldy, because you before talking about Peyton Wilson, you said there were two guys. Who was the other guy? Oh, Edgar Cooper, Edgar Cooper, of Texas A and M. He's not as big as Peyton, but his his suddenness and his movement is elite. 
And if you just watched Edrew Cooper against Alabama, and you always watch every SEC team against Alabama, like he's a first round pick. He might be a top 20 pick. Um, but he was just that good. And he was just, you know, he's spying the, you know, quarterbacks. You watch him spy uh, Jane Daniels and chase Jane Daniels down, um, you know, in any, any role that you put him in uh, as a blitzer, a rusher, um, you know, just a guy that can clean things up, reads, reads plays really well. Edgar Cooper is my other guy. So does that mean you uh you are not a junior Colson guy from from Michigan? Because some people giving him the the uh, the nod as the top linebacker in the class. Yeah, no, I'm not against him. I just like those other two guys a lot better right now, and, and so I just those two just come to. If, if people are talking uh, inside linebacker, I don't think anybody's going in the first round. Sure, but if you're looking at you know inside linebacker right now, those those two Wilson and Edger and Cooper look like one and two to me. What do you think, Vic Fangio? is looking for not specifically at, at, at linebacker, but in, including linebacker at all three levels of the defense. As much as the Eagles think long-term with the draft, Vic needs players, right? So if, if, if he has his say in the draft room, what do you think he wants out of this draft? A starting corner. A starting <laughs> corner. Like, I, I think, you know, that's a need. That, that's a need, Zach. I mean, we know they surrendered 35 touchdowns last year, the second most to Washington. It was hard to watch both the tackling and the coverage uh, throughout the year. And, you know, they threw a bunch of guys out there and picked guys up off the street. They, this, you know, there's picking a spot where there's going to be a good corner there at 22 if they just stay there. Um, if they go chasing somebody, they might have to give up some assets. But I, I'd say that he needs a starting corner right now. And everybody's looking for him. Everybody's looking for four of them, um, you know, whether it's in the slot, backup against four wide receiver sets, whatever it is, everybody's looking for four guys that can play right now. And I don't know that the Eagles have two that can line up and really play the way Vic needs them to play. How do you stack the, those corners at the top of the draft? If they're, if you're sitting at 22, who, who are you hoping is on the board? Well, I think Cooper DeGene would be there. And I, I love the kid. And I think Vic would love him too, just because he's a football player. He can tackle, he can cover. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got ball skills. Um, you know, he's got punt return ability if you want him to do that. Uh, but, you know, Terry and Arnold was an um, unbelievable player. Like his his ability to read plays, especially in the run game, and to go make plays in the run game. Now, yes, he can turn and run with all of them. And you can find Ladd McConkey beating him. He gets beat. They all get beat. But his, he's pretty sticky, though. Like he's, he's really good. Um, Quinion Mitchell is exactly what you're looking for in a corner. Like just tremendous suddenness, break on the football. I don't know if anybody defended more passes in college football last year than Quinion. And now I know it's the MAC conference, so you have to maybe consider that. But I think he, the fact that he ran like he ran, it shows up on film. And so I think those guys, Wiggins, I like Wiggins, might be like his frame kind of concerns me a little bit. Yeah. Playing outside like that. Um, and McKissie, look, Kool Aid is probably the number one corner going into last year's season. He was probably the number one corner on everybody's board or a lot of teams board. So it's not like he's dropped down. It's just that Tyrion was just, just so good in every phase of the game last year at Alabama. If I can follow up on, uh, on Cooper DeGene, because the sentiment that, that, that you shared is, is something you hear. This is a football player, right? Can play corner, can play slot, can play safety. Uh, the knock on him seems to be the lack of press man that he played at, at Iowa. Was that a function of the defense he was in? Do you think that's something he could do in the NFL? And do you ultimately see him as a starting outside guy uh, in the NFL? I see him as a starting outside guy, Zach, and it's a concern. Concern, you know, can you do what Terry and Arnold does and some of these guys, can you just line up and, and just run with these, you know, these elite athletes on the outside? And you don't see enough of it, but I think he can do it. I think his uh, – how, how twitched up he is, how he runs, straight line speed, like I, I believe he can do it. And, he, and his size – and physical attributes. I, I think he can play that style if you want him to. I'm going to ask you, uh, Baldy, uh, to go back in the, the way back machine here as we, as we talk about the difference between these guys as, as slabs of meat or <laughs> human beings. 1982, when you were entering the league and uh, you do not get drafted, what was draft weekend like for you? Young Brian Baldinger hoping to get the call? W what was that all about? Well, first of all, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't broadcast on TV or radio. 
So the only way you knew what happened in the draft is you, you open up the Durham, Durham Morning Herald in the morning and you read who, who, who got drafted in the 12 rounds. So 12 rounds came and went. I got a phone call late in the draft. My brother got drafted in the 10th round. So I knew my brother got drafted at Wake Forest by the Giants. So I was already, I was already pissed that I didn't get drafted. Then when I find out my brother, who I thought was kind of lazy, gets drafted in the 10th <laughs> round, now I'm really ticked. And now the, the draft has come and gone in its finals at Duke. And I'm studying for a German exam. And I, I got, I get a call from the, you know, from the Cowboys saying, you know, Buck Buchanan wants to come by and talk to me about a free agent contract. And I didn't know Buck Buchanan at the time was a retired air force colonel who ran, um, he ran the laundry department at, at, with the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, he, he cleaned, he, he cleaned the jocks and the socks. Um, he ran the equipment room. So that's how highly they thought of me. But Buck <laughs> showed up. Buck showed up on Monday after the draft, and um, you know we negotiated a deal. Uh, he started off with a five five hundred dollar signing bonus and a three year deal thirty two thirty four thirty six thousand um, dollars. And I got him with my negotiating skills because I had a a car out there in the parking lot that had no brakes. So I negotiated with Buck up to twelve hundred fifty dollars that got my brakes fixed nice. in my car and I could drive my car home to New York to celebrate becoming a Dallas Cowboy. Love that. That's a great story. Um, if I can sneak one more in here. Um, <laughs> he has uh, no respect for your, <laughs> no, for no, your, no, your I, personal time. No, it's all right, Zach. It's all right. I, I, I love that story. I was going to ask a, a, a Graham Barton offensive line question, but I'm actually not. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I did want to ask you. No, I, I, to stick with Duke, but I, I, I did want to ask you, I heard you on Anthony's show speaking about Michael Penix Jr., and the reason I, I wanted to bring it up is because for the Eagles, the best case scenario is if six quarterbacks go off the board in the first 21 picks, right? It pushes yeah. guys down. And we, we know four could go in the top four, the top 10, but mm -hmm. it seems Michael Penix Jr. and then uh, Bo Nix are kind of the wild cards there. Uh, based on what you see, based on what you know, do you think six quarterbacks go off in the top 21? Or do you think it could be a situation where those guys are lingering and the Eagles need to move up to get someone they like? No, I think six are going to go. I think you're going to see some teams maybe trade back from the second round into the first round with Baltimore, San Francisco, Kansas City, maybe to take a bone X. But I, I think Michael Penix is going to go. I, I don't, excuse me, Zach. I, I think, um, I think there's a lot of teams that are very interested. I think the Raiders are very interested. I think the Falcons are interested if it's at the right, not at eight, but somewhere else. Um, I think Seattle at 16 is offensive coordinator at Washington is now the offense coordinator for Mike McDonald uh, in Seattle. I think they're very interested in, in his ability. Uh, he's my second favorite quarterback in this draft sack. So I think he's going to go in the first round. I'd be curious what Sean Payton thinks about him. Mm -hmm. If he's, if he runs through progressions as quickly as he wants his guys to be able to do, but I think he'd be enamored by the arm and by, the mental part of his game and um, and just his accuracy, overall accuracy. I think I can say on behalf of all uh, Wake Forest graduates that I think the lazy perception is probably fair. We, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's something that, that, that hits, hits home. Uh, yeah. and is there anybody like day three, Baldy, who is just your guy, like your favorite guy to watch? You will uh, be super excited just to see where he goes. Well, I mean, if you if, look, the Eagles are looking. I, I, I'll, I'll address the Eagles here. Like the Eagles, it never seems like they can find safeties. You know, maybe Reed Blankenship is a guy mm -hmm. that they like. Maybe Sidney Brown. We'll see. Um, but Dangerian Taylor Demerson at Texas Tech. Yeah, he's got he's got ten interceptions. You know, in the last, you know, at, 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 at Texas Tech, he's got eight in the last two years. Like he's he runs in the four fours. Like he's covers a lot of ground. He looks like a good football player to me. Like, I, I'd go to bat for him. If you look at offensive linemen, like, I think the Eagles might draft two. But Agreed. if you look at Elijah Klein at UTEP and tell me he's not an offensive guard in this league. Like, you know, the guy's six-year player there, but he started four years captain. Like, he's just big and strong. I, I've run his name by a couple elite offensive line coaches in this league, and they're like, yep, he can start a guard in this league. So, like, those, those are a couple guys you know, that probably day three prospects that I think are going to get drafted and become good football players. Love that. Well, Baldy, thank you so much. Yeah. We will talk, well, to, you, we'll I mean, talk to you soon. Uh, let's, let's reconvene as we get closer and closer. And 
let's uh, let's chop this up a couple more times, maybe before or after. We'll see what the Eagles do. I would like to do that. Thank All you right. so much. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, guys. See you soon. Take care. <laughs> 